It's 2 p.m. on Wednesday, September 3rd, here in Korea, live from Seoul. I'm Na Hyun Gyung. These are the stories we are following at this hour. Islamic State militants send a second message to the U.S. with a video showing the beheading of another American hostage. Washington sends more military personnel to Iraq. Legislators in Seoul vote on whether to strip a ruling party lawmaker of his immunity from arrest as he is suspected of taking bribes. And Russian President Vladimir Putin reportedly claims that battlehead Kiev is an easy target. The Kremlin says Putin's remarks were taken out of context. Now, Islamic State militants have released another video showing the beheading of an American journalist. The group warns that another hostage will suffer the same fate unless the United States stops launching airstrikes in Iraq. Our Hwang Sung Hee has our top story. It's titled A Second Message to America. And it's a message that's just as brutal as the first. The video shows another American hostage dressed in an orange jumpsuit on his knees next to a masked man dressed in black and holding a knife. The beheading of U.S. journalist Stephen Sotloff was posted online Tuesday by the Islamic State with a warning to President Obama to halt airstrikes in Iraq. So just as your missiles continue to strike our people, our knife will continue to strike the next of your people. The masked man's voice is the same, an apparently British voice, as the world heard on the video of James Foley's murder a fortnight ago. Mr. Sotloff, a 31-year-old freelance journalist from Miami, disappeared while reporting from Syria in August last year, but his family had kept the news secret, fearing harm to him if they went public. Last week, Mr. Sotloff's mother issued a video appeal pleading with the militants to spare her son. As a mother, I ask your justice to be merciful and not punish my son for matters he has no control over. In an effort to help battle Islamic State, President Obama announced Tuesday he will send around 350 additional military personnel to Iraq to protect U.S. diplomatic facilities and workers in Baghdad. The masked There's man in the latest video also shows who he claims national, to be a David British Haynes national, identified on screen as David Haynes, and makes it clear he is also now at risk. Hwang sang Arirang News. And now on to the three American detainees this time held in North Korea. The U.S. government says it is doing all it can to secure the release of the three. Speaking to CNN on Tuesday, State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki said the U.S. was looking into a variety of options to help them, such as dispatching a special envoy. She added North Korea refused Washington's earlier proposal to send Robert King, the U.S. special envoy for North Korean human rights, to Pyongyang. The White House also says the safe release of its citizens was at the top of the administration's agenda. The comments come a couple of days after the three detainees were granted a five-minute interview with CNN in which they all pleaded for the U.S. government to do more to help them. Meanwhile, U.S. National Security Advisor Susan Rice will make a three-day trip to China next week. Her itinerary there, according to her spokesperson, includes talks with her Chinese counterpart Yang Jiechi and other senior figures to discuss bilateral as well as regional issues. Among them is an incident last month in which Washington claims a Chinese fighter jet buzzed a U.S. surveillance plane in international airspace. The trip also sets the stage for a potential potential bilateral summit between U.S. President Barack Obama and Chinese President Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the APEC Forum in Beijing in November. Now, over at the National Assembly here in South Korea, lawmakers are gathering at the plenary hall as we speak to vote on a motion that would strip a ruling party lawmaker of his immunity from arrest. Our National Assembly correspondent Shi Myung Gil tells us what the motion has been prompted by. 
Ruling Saenuri Party lawmaker Song Kang Ho stands to be the fourth sitting lawmaker arrested during the 19th National Assembly. Song is alleged to have taken some 54,000 U.S. dollars in bribes in 2012 from local railway supplier AVT in exchange for business favors. At the time, the four-term lawmaker was the chairman of the Parliamentary Land and Maritime Committee, which oversees the Korea Rail Network Authority. By law, Korean lawmakers are immune from arrest during parliamentary sessions. But the National Assembly will vote on a motion this Wednesday to strip Song of that immunity. If it passes, it will set the stage for his arrest, with a judge ultimately deciding whether to issue an arrest warrant. The move comes as part of an anti-corruption campaign led by the prosecution. The ruling Henry party has been consistent over the past few weeks in saying that the party would not protect Song and would bring the arrest motion to the plenary floor. Meanwhile, regarding the hundreds of pending bills related to stimulating the economy, they are not expected to be submitted during the plenary session as the rival parties continue their discord over the special Seoul Ferry Bill. Kim young Arirang News. In the meantime, President Park Geun-hye is holding a meeting with officials and businessmen to check in on the country's path toward deregulation. They are reviewing how far the government has gone in terms of streamlining red tape in Korean society. Now, today's meeting is a follow-up on more than 100 reform measures set up during the previous meeting. Back in March, the president held a rare seven-hour televised meeting to stress the need for regulatory reforms to spur growth and also listened to suggestions from her ministers and business leaders. The, gov the government will introduce deregulatory measures for the construction, online economy and agriculture sectors as well as for local governments. Korea is often praised for having advanced IT technologies and infrastructure, but apparently there are some negative elements that have weakened Korea's global competitiveness. Our Song Ji-san tells us where Korea ranks in the World Economic Forum's rankings. Korea has taken a step backward in terms of global competitiveness. The World Economic Forum in its annual report placed Korea 26th in the world a spot lower than last year. It's the nation's lowest ranking since 2004. The finance ministry pinned the slide to April's deadly ferry disaster, which has dented domestic spending and Pyongyang's continued missile launches. While the report touted Korea's macroeconomic environment, its infrastructure and technological advances as positives, it said the nation's institutions Development of the financial market and labor market efficiency fell well below the global average. The most problematic factors, the report said, were policy instability, government inefficiencies, and tax and labor regulations. The annual report evaluates 144 global economies based on 12 different categories. The rankings at the top remained rather stable this year. Switzerland was number one for the sixth consecutive year followed by Singapore and the United States. The report notes that the growth prospects in advanced economies are better than they have been in recent years, while emerging economies are forecast to grow more modestly than they have in the past. Song ji Arirang News. In search of new growth engines, Korean conglomerates invested more on research and development and less on plants and equipment in the first half of this year. Seoul-based research firm CEO Score says R&D investments by the nation's 30 largest companies jumped more than 7 percent to nearly 16 billion U.S. dollars year over year in the January to June period. Facility-related investment, however, fell 0.3 percent during the same period. Now, some poured the most into R&D, followed by LG and Hyundai Motor. And speaking of Samsung, Samsung Electronics has been having a rough ride of late as it struggles to deal with the slumping profits and increased competition from cheaper Chinese manufacturers. The company's share price is at a two-year low and profits are forecast to continue falling. Our Kwon Soa has more. 
Shares in Samsung Electronics are on the slide, with the company's stock slumping below the 1.2 million won, or roughly 1,180 U.S. dollar mark, for the first time in two years on Tuesday. This comes as local brokerage houses have been slashing their estimates for the Korean tech giant's third quarter operating income. While last year's third quarter figure was some $10 billion, the average estimate of 27 local brokerages for the same quarter this year stands at less than $6.9 billion. That's a drop of over 30 percent in the space of a year. The lower end of the projections made by brokerage firms such as Hyundai Securities were even below $6 billion. Industry observers attribute the worries to the growing competition as other mobile manufacturers are threatening Samsung's overseas sales. In particular, China's Xiaomi has emerged as a serious contender, selling more smartphones in China in the second quarter than Samsung could muster. Samsung's second quarter operating profit was disappointing, coming in at slightly over 7 billion U.S. dollars. That's down nearly 25 percent from a year before. Although the Korean firm smartphone sales are expected to rise by 7 percent in quarter three, analysts say intensifying competition from Chinese manufacturers as well as Apple will force Samsung to pour more of its profits into its marketing budget. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Korea's foreign exchange reserves fell for the first time in more than a year last month. The Bank of Korea says the country's foreign reserves came in at nearly 370 billion U.S. dollars as of the end of August, falling by almost 500 million from July. Foreign exchange reserve had hit a record high in July last year and had been on a rise since then before dropping last month on the back of the weakening euro and the British pound against the greenback. In the year 2012, for Korea was added to record high. All of the day's important events, events close to home and around the world. Join Na Hyung Kyung, live from Seoul. Shopping market thinks the true meaning of creation shines through. Russian President Vladimir Putin's private conversation with a European official is making headlines. He allegedly said in just two weeks' time, Russian troops could gain control of Kiev and do it easily. Shin Zemin has this report. Russian President Vladimir Putin says his forces could take control of Ukraine's capital city in just two weeks if given the order. This according to the outgoing president of the European Commission, Jose Manuel Barroso, who says Putin made the statement to him in a private phone conversation. The Kremlin has not denied that Putin made the remark, but said it was taken out of context. They've threatened to release an audio recording and transcript of the phone conversation to clarify what Putin said and slammed Barroso for making it public in the first place. Barroso claims Putin told him that Kiev would be an easy conquest for his forces. World leaders are starting to arrive in Wales for a NATO summit on Thursday where the crisis in Ukraine will dominate talks. NATO has proposed setting up a rapid response force to deter threats to Eastern European member states and will decide whether to deploy to Baltic states who remain worried about Russian aggression. U.S. President Barack Obama arrived in one of those states, Estonia, on Wednesday to ally concerns before heading to the NATO summit in Wales. Shin Zemin, Arirang News. Aid organizations fighting to contain the Ebola epidemic in West Africa have appealed for urgent international assistance before it's too late. They say if not stopped, Ebola could very well threaten peace and security beyond the borders of Africa. Our Son Jung-in has this story. Aid organizations battling to contain the worst ever outbreak of Ebola have issued separate but very similar demands. They say international intervention is needed to stem the spread of the deadly virus, calling it a global problem, not just something confined to West Africa. Doctors Without Borders, the group spearheading medical efforts in affected countries, says the fight is being lost, with treatment centers being reduced to places where people go to die alone. Six months into the worst Ebola epidemic in history, the world is losing the battle to contain it. Leaders are failing 
to come to grip with this transnational threat. In a separate speech in the U.S., the head of the National Public Health Agency warned the epidemic is spiraling out of control, with infection numbers rising fast. There is a window of opportunity to tamp this down, but that window is closing. We need action now to scale up the response. Freyden went on to say the answer to this outbreak comes down to three things resources, technical experts in healthcare and management, and a global, coordinated and unified approach. The World Health Organization, criticized for not acting sooner to bring the outbreak under control, reports that more than 3,000 people have been infected in West Africa, but this could rise to 20,000 and spread to more countries. Meanwhile, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization has issued a food security alert for Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea, which are the countries most affected by the outbreak. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Back here in Korea, two Special Forces soldiers have died from apparent suffocation during a training exercise for how to act if taken prisoner by enemy forces. Military officers said today that the two staff surgeons, only identified by their family names Yi and Cho, collapsed late Tuesday while training in a unit of the Special Warfare Command in the central town of Jingpyeong. The exercise has cadets cover their heads with a hood and drop to their knees with hands tied behind their backs. Now, one other cadet was also injured during the exercise and is said to have returned to his barracks. The military, which has come under fire in recent months for a number of scandals, was quick to emphasize that it was an accident and not the result of inhumane treatment. And moving on to some health news, local researchers say they found a couple of key substances that facilitate the spread of cancer cells in the body. Our Kim in reports. About 17,000 people are diagnosed with lung cancer in Korea every year. 80% of them are fatal cases. Cancer cells travel through blood vessels and spread to other organs of the body, making it difficult to treat, especially among lung cancer patients. Even if the patient receives an operation, there are cases where they fail to recover because of the spread. The patient needs to receive treatment that does not allow the cancer to spread. Korean researchers for the first time have found two key substances that are involved in the spread of cancer to other organs. A particular protein that controls cell growth and an enzyme that produces active oxygen. The researchers say these proteins and enzymes cause changes in cancer cells, making them multiply in number and causing them to spread. We found that changes that occur in complex 1 or P21 has an effect on the spread of cancer in patients. We hope to carry out strategic treatment that will be able to control the spread. On average, 66 percent of all cancer patients are able to survive five more years. However, if the cancer spreads, the figure drops to 18 percent. But effective control of the protein and enzyme identified by the researchers is expected to raise the survival rate of cancer patients significantly. Kim min Arirang News. A theater director with 60 years of experience is showing he's more than just a great director. Our Im Yoon Hee joins me today with more. So Yoon Hee, who are we going to talk about today? So today we'll be talking about director Kim Young Woon. Now mm -hmm. he has, like you said, have had over 60 years of experience. And not only has he established a theater, been a part of over 60 productions, but he also really helped uh, nurture the next generation of actors and actors, actresses. So this year marks his 60th year and to celebrate He's put aside a very special play for the theater. Take a look. Charlotte hasn't seen her daughter in over seven years. And when they meet again, the tension from their troubled relationship has yet to be cleared up. An accomplished pianist, Charlotte never saw eye to eye with her daughter. But the two decide to try to make amends, learning new things about each other in the process. 
Korean director Im Young Ung's reinterpretation of Ingmar Bergman's drama film of the same name takes a stage to commemorate Im's 60-year anniversary since his debut. I'm very fortunate to be able to have done plays, which is something I love, for the past 60 years. We were together for the founding of the Sanulim Theatre Company, and he guided me through my first play, so we're very connected. The San Ulim Theatre Company debuted with the production of the Nobel-winning play Waiting for Godot, led by director Im in 1969, along with the cast members. And since then, they've expanded, even building their very own theatre. Samuel Beckett's play Waiting for Godot perfectly captures the idea of the odd modern times and the people who live within it. Since the beginning, the Sanulim Theatre Company has been a special contributor to the world of theatre, producing legends such as actress Son Suk, who has now been acting for 52 years, all made possible by the genuine passion of director Im. He's someone who is always there for you in any life crisis to teach you and even carry you. Director Im has been a profound influence on many in the field, as not only a director, but also a teacher, a guide, and even a friend. In life comes wisdom and experience. We want to show this through the stage and to inspire people to live with character. I hope this play can guide people with that. Hmm, seems to be such a legendary character there. And the Sanulim Theatre, of course, has a very long, unique uh, history in the theatre culture as well. Right, there is a unique story behind that as well. So the theatre was built in 1985 um, in Seoul's Honggik University area. And so actually the theatre itself was built by uh, director Im and his wife. They spent their own money to build the three-story theatre uh, for the theatre company. And mm -hmm. so it's very special to them. It's very special to the theatre uh, community as well. And so it really goes to prove their dedication, director Im's dedication to his work. Mm -hmm. And it's not just director Im though, I mean it seems like people in the, cult, in the theater scene mm -hmm. tend to stay there and they have their unique sense of pride right. almost, uh, that they're very proud of what they do and they, for example, the actress Son Suk that we just saw, mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. been the number one, uh, you know, legendary actress there mm -hmm. as well. Right, so she is a big figure in the theater industry. So uh, the play industry here in Korea, so this play takes place in Taeyangro, which is a very popular, it's an epicenter place for plays here in Korea. And so the play culture here is very interesting as well. So I was talking to a theater director the other day and she was telling me that uh, plays are the center of all productions on the stage. And so operas, musicals, they all involve a bit of acting. And so everything really goes down to the play, the basics or the play and so it's very special for uh, the I guess entertainment culture here in general in Korea and so of course it's no surprise that the theater industry does very well here and so Taehyungro you know it's very popular I'm sure you've seen hundreds of posters hundreds mm -hmm. of different advertisements for plays I mean there are dozens and dozens every day and so it's a uh, very special for Koreans. Taehyungro is a good place to visit so you should go check out this play before it's right and, and that's open. the area where the, you need to have more support as well for the actors exactly, and actresses exactly. and for the environment there as mm -hmm. well. All right thank you very much Uni for today's report. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs>Afternoon, I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather forecast. It's been raining heavily nationwide since last night and things have calmed down for the moment here in Seoul. But it's still raining heavily in both the Cholo provinces and most of the southern regions. And due to this rain, we are seeing dramatic drops in our highs, so make sure to layer up before heading out. And the rain is expected to clear up tonight in the central region and uh, Gangwon-do and Cholo provinces. But until then, Gangwon-do and Gyeongsang of the provinces can expect between up to 60 to 80 millimeters through tomorrow, while the rest of the country is looking at about 40 millimeters. Now going over to our temperature readings, Seoul will top out at 23 this afternoon, while the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan 
will be similar to yesterday, hitting to 26 and 27 degrees. Now moving over to other regions, Jeju Island tops to 30, while Tokdo and Mangkungang lingers in the low 20s. Now that's all for now. I'm Shaw Park and back to you, Hyung Young. Thank you, Michelle, for that. And that's all we have for you now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more at 4 p.m. Korea time.